Microsoft, makes about $3 million a day, so he probably really does <laughs> love this company, okay? And while you don't make that kind of money, right, you do something else, right? You take, you take kids' dreams. There's not a single kid that doesn't want to be a learner, who doesn't have a dream coming into school. Right? You take kids' dreams and you turn them into reality in your classrooms. You keep them from, you don't let them see that they could fail. It's not an option in your class. It's not an option in your class. You actually have a plan, don't you? What will you do the first day of school? I have a teacher, all he does is shake, he shakes the kids' hands. He's a good friend of mine. I like what he does. He stands outside the classroom and he shakes kids. He's a middle school, or a no, high school teacher. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. I know we give hugs, right? <laughs> he shakes high school kids' hands. He pulls them into the classroom. He says, I know that's, not, <laughs> that's uncomfortable for some of you, but I'm just going to tell you, I love what I do. This is like my second home. Matter of fact, sometimes it's my first home. I spend more time here than I do at home sometimes. It <laughs> kills my wife that I do that. But I love this job, and I'm really good at it. I make history come alive, and the majority of my students do incredibly well. I have an S-curve. Let me describe what an S-curve is. That shows that a lot of students are performing at a high level because of what we do here in this classroom. I work hard at what I do. And I expect my learners in my classroom to learn hard, all right? And if we do that, we'll accomplish what we have. I have some targets that we've got to hit. Now, I try to make them meaningful. I try to make them relevant. I try to bring them into the rigor of, of understanding the application. I'm not about facts and figures in history. I'm about application. This is how high we're gonna take that concept. Let me give you an example, and it gives them an example of how you take, you don't just have to know the Declaration of Independence here, you have to know what it really means, why they wrote it, and how it applies to some Supreme Court decisions that are being made now. Application of history. He describes it in unbelievable terms. Then he says, and I've got some ideas about how we should approach things. I think that number one, we ought to be a collaborative team in this classroom. You ever talk? I know, I think we're pretty good at this. Most of us are. You guys talk to your kids about being on a team, right? In your classroom, you're the first grade team and the second grade team and you're the Campbell team and so forth like that, right? Kids could tell you who they play for. We did a theme one year, an Olympic year, go for the gold. That's that branding thing, you remember? Brighter tomorrow, one brick at a time. Courage to explore, the adventure begins. An Olympic year, go for the gold. Digging deeper, finding hidden treasures. Everyone can be a hero. Those themes that we could rally around, that had slogans that we could develop, and songs that we could make, rituals and music and icon, the way to celebrate those things in our school that are critical. And our celebrations, by the way, were not, because someone had this as a question. Our celebrations were about recognizing things, important things. We didn't have to have tangible rewards and bribery and, you know, we didn't have to do that. Kids, we discovered, would respond if you were enthusiastic, if you were recognizing. So we didn't have to have big old parties and cake and ice cream and jazz like that. We asked our kids one time, we told them we were teaching a lesson on, on compassion. And we asked them, I said, you know, the community does a lot of great things for this school, as you guys all, all know. And they talk a lot about how great this school is, as you know. And I'd like for us to think about demonstrating that. This is the month for compassion. And the Ozark Food Harvest is in need of food. And I'm going to challenge us to bring some food to contribute to the pantry. You know what? We, and, and, and I told them, I said, there's no prize for this. We're not going to count which classroom has the most and give them a pizza party. We just think we ought to do this. We ought to give back to a community that gives to us. So I'm going to ask you to bring in canned goods. Now, this is not a large school. This is a school at that time about 250, 300 kids. We brought in 1,500 cans of, of non-perishable foods. And the kids just did it because it was suggested that that's the right thing to do. Kids want the, and we just recognize, man, look at this. Brought it in, displayed it at the, in the floor of the gymnasium for the assembly and said, you guys are amazing. And the guy from the Ozark Food Harvest came and he just rewarded them with all kinds of nice things in terms of his, what he said to them. Gave them nothing except for words of thanks. Please understand that you can 
build a collaborative culture in your classroom. You don't have to hold bribery and rewards. You can recognize and celebrate without bribery and rewards. You can do it simply by a verbal recognition of what's important in your school. So please do that. Now, I thought one time I would try this one. Thought I, and how, how the high school teacher gave it to me, he says, try this, Tim. Just ask your kids, how did you come to school today? I do it. Once a week, he says, I ask my high school kids, how did you come to school today? I get all kinds of answers. Ready for the test, did my homework, broke up with my girlfriend, excited about the dance. One kid says, well, Mr. Urban, I came to school today listen, to listen to everything you have to say because I know that if you're the, you're the, you are the greatest teacher that I could ever have, and if I listen to you, I'll learn everything I need to know about American history. Now, the guy was playing around with how, right? High school kids do that sometimes. And Hal just says, I like that. Instead of all these other answers I keep getting, which I do like, but here's what I really want. I want an affirmation of why you're here. Would you just say, ready to learn? When I ask you, how did you come to school today? Would you just say, ready to learn? Listen to what it sounds like in this room. How did you come to school today? Ready to learn. You should, your kids should say that. The more they say what is positive, the more positive begins to come out. Now, I tried that with elementary kids. How did you come to school today, boys and girls? Bus, rode my bike, came in a car. <laughs> plan, plan, plan. What do you plan for? I did have Mrs. Williams. She was going to give all kinds of great ideas until I turned to Ricky and I said, Ricky, how did you come to school today? And he says, well, Mr. Brown, I came to school today ready to listen to everything you have to say. No, he didn't. He said, I came to school today to listen to my teacher and learn everything I can because I want to become a better reader. And we just took Ricky's things. That's it. We're here to learn. Put your mind on the business of today. Your business of today is to become smarter. As I said before, your business of today is to become smarter at the end of the day than you were at the beginning of the day. That's your job as learners in this school. You've got to say those kinds of things. How will you communicate your expectations? How will you communicate your vision? How will you communicate the commitments you're going to make? And so on page six and seven, I want you to write your answers to these questions. What do I want my classroom to look like for students and for me? Am I on the right page? I bet you tore part of that page off, did you? No, is it there? Tell me I'm there. Nope. Oh yeah, good, we're in good shape. It's, you know, it's the six and seven page, right? Okay. Uh, what do I want my classroom to look like for students and for me? You should answer that question before you get kids. What do I want my students to, how do I want my students to interact with each other and with me? Write your answer down to that question. How do I want my students to approach learning? Write down what you want your students to do. How do you want them to approach learning? Because for everything that you want that requires you to have an action and a way to communicate that to the kids. So on each of the corresponding blocks that you have on that sheet, I want you to be challenged, and this is a collaborative effort with your group. After you have written your answers about what do you want it to look like and how do you want your kids to interact with each other and with, and with you and how do I want my students to approach learning, I then want you to come up with some key points, some key ideas of what you're going to communicate. How will you achieve that? Those are some commitments you'll make to your kids. Questions for me? This is really planning for the first day, all right? So I'm going to give you some time to do that. I'll go off the mic. I'm going to just wander around take the time. Take the time to really think through those critical questions. They're essential for kids to hear about your school, about your classroom.